Hey everybody, I spent $150 on a full face of makeup on Timu so you don't have to. This is a massive bag of products and I've seen so much about Timu makeup and how affordable it is and how good the quality is versus the price. So I'm super stoked to see the quality of all the products inside and make this full face of makeup. So if you'd like to see as well, stay exactly where you are because we're getting into it right now. First things first, let's check out the tools I got. First, a 25 piece brush set. This was $4.94 for 25 brushes. Now based on the way these feel, I can definitely tell why they're $5, but hey, it's 25 brushes, okay? This is obviously a quantity over quality issue and that's fine, I really didn't expect much. It's kind of funny though, because these are the exact same brushes that I won in a giveaway from Beaky Blender a long, long, long time ago. So I at least know the brushes work. However, I keep that set in my travel bag rather than using them every day because they have the shorter handles So they fit in a travel case a lot easier than full-size brushes But you can see how there's kind of like loose bristles on the edges and they're kind of coming apart a little bit And this ferrule isn't even all the way on the brush and I have to super glue that later So with the brushes, I'd say I definitely got what I paid for also got a 12 pack of powder puffs for two dollars and seven cents I actually use these religiously like literally every time I do my makeup So this is a sound investment and they even came in some cute colors like the pink and the purple. I've already got a ton of black, but I don't have a bunch of pink and purple. We also got a Gourd makeup sponge for 89 cents. This one was super, super affordable. Let's see if it feels like it was a dollar. Oh yeah, that is very firm. Wow, I feel like this could hurt somebody if you threw it at them. All right, those are the tools. Let's move into the makeup. For primer today, we've got the Pop Feel Photo Finish Primer. This is a smooth and blur primer. I'm pretty Pretty sure it's meant to be a dupe for the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. I mean, it's called Photo Finish. And I feel like a lot of these products are meant to be dupes, or at least the packaging insinuates that it's a dupe, but it's not a tube, so it's not an exact duplication. I hope the formula is a duplication, though, because I do really like the Photo Finish Primer. So it's just a clear gel-like consistency, definitely thinner than the Photo Finish Primer. Actually, that kind of just turned into water. Uh, I think the first layer did absolutely nothing. Um, I think that first layer did absolutely nothing. Okay, I'm going in before it melts. Maybe that way it'll at least leave a little bit of pore filling properties behind. This literally just feels like water. Maybe oily water? Well, it does have dimethicone in it and it's the second ingredient, so it's got to be pore filling. Oh! Hey, now that it's dried a little bit, it actually has smoothed out my skin a tiny little bit. It's nothing major. I don't have like flawless, perfect skin now, but it did do a little something. And honestly, for $1.79, that's all I can ask. Now we get to try out a new foundation. This one is from Party Queen France, and it looks like it's a dupe for the Milani Conceal and Perfect foundation. I mean, it's even literally the same bottle. It just says Party Queen France instead. And before you guys clock me for all of these shades being completely completely wrong for my skin tone, just know the options were kind of limited for complexion shades. But again, for $6.29, I'm not complaining. So let's pump a few pumps onto the mixing palette here and see what it's like. Oh, she is thick. My gosh. It seems like coverage is not gonna be an issue today. Okay, let's see how bad this shade matches. I mean, it's not the worst. I believe if I mix just a tiny little bit of my LA Girl Blue Mixing Pigment into the foundation, I might might be able to get it a little bit closer. I mean, I don't know. Let's just put it on. It is what it is at this point. Wow, that coverage is insane. Like this is giving me a new face. Kind of smells good too. Not like a fragrance at all. It just smells kind of chemically, but it's a good chemically smell. But it's kind of a good chemically smell if there ever was such a thing. Now that I see the shade on my neck, I think it's just a little bit too warm still and a little bit too light still. I wonder if the dollar rock is gonna be able to blend this out. God, I still can't believe the amount of of coverage this foundation has. But why does it look really good on the skin? I'm pretty sure the Milani foundation is matte and this one does kind of give me sort of matte vibes. There's a tiny bit of a glow left, but I don't really know if that's just because the foundation is still wet on the skin or if it's because the foundation itself is a little glowy or dewy. Does it say? It just says velvet skin. 
Care plus Healthy Glow. Oh, and it's a two-in-one foundation and concealer, hence the coverage. That makes sense. Definitely gonna get these ears today. There is no way I'm gonna be able to pull this off without covering every piece of skin that's visible. Okay, so yes, this sponge is very firm, but I can say it's not the firmest sponge I've ever tried to apply foundation with. For actual concealer, we've got something called the July Star 16 Hour Camo Concealer. With the name Camo Concealer, they're obviously trying to duplicate e.l.f., but the packaging and even the name brand font looks like they're trying to make it the Jouer Essential High Coverage Concealer Pen. So they're just trying to duplicate everything. I'm like 90% sure this is also going to be the wrong shade. It looks super, super pink. And with the foundation looking super, super yellow, I'm sure they're gonna look ridiculous beside each other. I mean, yeah, yeah, they kinda do. Really though, it is what it is. We're just gonna move right along and keep going with this full face of makeup. Since this color is so off, I'm gonna try to just build it up everywhere I wanna highlight. That way the pink might be able to blend in with the yellow a little bit. Maybe we can get something in the middle. Who knows? I don't really even think this shade is lighter than the foundation. Maybe it is a tiny little bit. The applicator makes it feel like the Wet n Wild concealer. Let's see if it is a little bit highlighting. Maybe the tiniest bit. Maybe. It's definitely pink though. You know, even though the shades are way off, the formulas are actually pretty good. So far. So far. Pretty funny the foundation I believe has more coverage than the concealer. Okay, yeah, that is a little bit lighter. I can see it highlighting now. Considering at this point, I thought we were gonna be up shit creek without a paddle, I think we're doing just fine. Cover up some of this eyelid darkness, if we can. Surprisingly, the skin is looking flawless. Im Heckable. And by the way, the concealer was $1.34. I just can't believe for these prices, we're actually getting some good results. But let me not speak too soon. For cream highlight, blush, bronzer, and contour, I've got a few different items here. This one's the Carla Secret 12 Color Concealer and Blush Palette. Literally looks just like the Makeup Forever packaging. Even their logo looks almost just like the Makeup Forever packaging. I don't see how brands can get away with doing this kind of stuff. Like, how can you make such an exact duplication of someone else's product and make it a fraction of the cost at $5.84. Surprisingly, we even have a pretty good range of concealer and blush. Not necessarily in brightness, but definitely in undertone. We also have the J Swing Multifunctional Makeup Pin. This one's definitely supposed to be a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Wands, except this is $3.47. The Quibest Rose Cream Liquid Blush. This is $2.00 and 60 cents. Can you say rare beauty? And the touch up four in one makeup pin for $3.77. And this looks exactly like the Ali Oop four in one makeup pin, but it definitely doesn't feel like it. I know we've got plenty of coverage and I really don't need to add any more, but I'm going to add some of the concealer shade. I just want to see how much coverage it has in it, but man, I think all of these are going to be too dark. I'm glad they included a white at least. I guess I'm going to take some of the new neutrally shade right here and then I'll add some of the white on top of it because I know it's gonna be too dark. Oh! Hey, that's not as dark as I thought it was. That may even be a tiny bit lighter than the foundation. I'm so glad there's a shade in here that can at least sort of level out the uneven tone on my skin. Then the tiniest bit of the white, just for highlighting purposes. It does seem really, really thin, almost like it's just made of water and pigment. I think it's so interesting to see where the differences are in between the cost of more luxury makeup and more affordable makeup. And I feel like a lot of it is just those extra ingredients that make something good for your skin or appear more smoothing. Just a little bit of a higher tier quality of ingredients. I will say at least the coverage is not sheer. It's more like a light medium. I just really don't know if it's going to be buildable without it being really textured. It could be though because it is pretty thin. Apparently I forgot a cream bronzer so let's just use the contour and we'll see if it's warm enough to use as a bronzer. If it's not I'm pretty sure I have a powder bronzer somewhere in this pile of makeup. Come on, Charlotte dupe, what you got for me? Come on, there we go. Oh, this looks so dark. I may have made a mistake. No, I think we'll be okay. And it also seems like it's a little bit warm toned. So maybe it is gonna be a good bronzer. Since I'm not really sure of the blendability of this yet, I'm gonna use one of those brushes that came in the little kit and just try to blend it out before I go in with a sponge. Just in case the sponge decides to soak up all of the product. If I just blend it out with the brush first, I can see the coverage 
then go from there. Doesn't seem like the dry down is way too fast. It's still blending and it's been sitting there for a second since I worked on the neck and the jawline first. Wow, that's actually kind of pretty. I think it almost has a little bit of a glow to it, but like a golden glow. Holy crap, this looks so good. I really wish I had used the Charlotte Tilbury contour wand so I could compare this to it because I really like this. I just wonder if it's comparable, but honestly, even if it's not, not an exact dupe formula wise. I think for $3.47, why not go for it? Jeez. Okay, typically with more affordable products like this, you don't have this kind of time to be able to blend things out. With most affordable cream contours, this would have already been dried and I'd have a bunch of spots that I was trying to blend out, but this stays super creamy for a really long time. I can't believe this is so good. Look at that. Flawless. Now let's try the Quibest blush. I was kind of considering using one of the blushes in the Carla Secret palette, but this one just looks too cute not to try. I'm really curious if it's as pigmented as the Rare Beauty blush is, because those have a lot of color and they go a long way. Now let's see if the blush blends. That was fast. Like, really fast. Ooh, she's very natural looking. Yeah, that is definitely not as pigmented as the Rare Beauty blush. But for $2.60, I really don't mind having to build it up a little bit more. That is okay. Ooh, okay, so you can't leave this one on the face to dry as much as you can the contour. The little spots are trying to stay there. And we're gonna get to see if she's buildable. I'm gonna add quite a bit now. Worst case, I can't get it to blend out and I just have really intense blush today. That is okay. I'm I'm loving this color. It's just really not that pigmented, but we're just gonna say third time's a charm and this is gonna be the last time we're going in. I mean, it is building up and you can clearly see that there's color on both sides. It's just not quite as dramatic as I like to do my blush. But for a natural wearable blush girly, it's perfection. And now it's the perfect amount of color. I thought the Alley Oop dupe for some reason had some kind of complexion products in it, but it really doesn't. It's got a lip liner, a brow bone highlighter, an eyeliner, and a brow pencil. I guess I thought maybe one of these would be a teeny tiny contour stick. I don't know what I was thinking. Anyway, we're just gonna save this for the eyes, maybe lips. So ultimately I'm gonna save this for later, but I do want to use the brow bone highlighter just to see what kind of finish we get. Oh, it's very sparkly and it's sort of a champagne-y gold flesh tone. Wow, it looks like a highlighter. This is so satisfying. Gonna use one of our brand new handy dandy flat brushes and just blend that out or try to. Okay, or not, that's fine too. I think maybe that brush was just a little too firm. Let me try a softer one. Okay, well, that does not blend out. Good to know. Well, it does blend a little bit with the finger, so maybe that's what we'll need to do to make that work because neither brush I used was having it. It did kind of work with the finger though, so. I'll take it. I could have sworn I also got a liquid highlighter, but I can't find it anywhere and it wasn't in my order receipt, so I guess I didn't. So we'll just be using a powder highlighter today, but before we can go in with a powder highlight, we need to lock this makeup in with some setting powder. For $7.19, I know, that is crazy expensive, we have the MAC Andy Loose Powder. You guys, I almost didn't get this powder for how expensive it was. I mean, this was kind of ridiculous pricing. Wow! That looks really, really cool though. Like, I don't mind that I paid $7 now. It's fancy. And it comes with a luxurious powder puff. It's actually a really thick, good feeling powder puff. And it's got a sifter, so your mess will be a little bit less than what it would have been without a sifter. Okay, let's blend out this creasing. Okay, creasing is blended out, holding my under eyes firm. Whoa, this powder is super fine. I'm gonna take some off on the back of my hand, make sure the puff isn't too covered because I want to set before I bake and lock it in. Wow, this powder is actually really, really nice. It's a super thin powder, so it's not adding any kind of texture, but it's still setting everything and blurring the skin. Oh my gosh, you guys, my under eyes look so smooth. Now that everything is set, I'm gonna go ahead and bake as well. So I'm gonna just take another layer, but not pat it off on the back of my hand and go ahead and press that into all the same areas that I just put powder. Just for a little bit of brightening as as well as to really bake those areas 
noticed that I have some slight fine lines. Want to hide that as much as I can. You know, make that skin as doll-like as possible. Now while I'm baking, I'm going to go ahead and set the rest of my face using a press powder. Coming in at $4.04, we have the Clever Cat Fit Me pressed powder. Bet you can't guess what this is a dupe for. I mean, how do they get away with being so blatantly obvious? So it looks like in the top there is the pressed powder. We've also got a powder puff and another powder? Yeah, another powder, but I think it's darker. Yeah, it is. Wow. Okay, so we have two pressed setting powders in one, I guess. Oh my gosh. That smells like my great great grandmother. Oh, I'm pretty sure they used Cody Airspun and pressed it because that smells exactly like Cody Airspun. Oh my gosh. And I guess I'm just going to use the little powder puff that it came with. Unfortunately, the brush set really doesn't have a whole lot of face brushes. In fact, it's got four. So I'm gonna save those for the other powder products instead. Oh my gosh, this fragrance is so intense. Not quite as strong as Cody Airspun, but man, it is strong. I take it back, I am gonna use a brush. I'm just gonna use the same one that I used to blend the bronzer slash contour out, except I cleaned all the product up. So hopefully we won't have any problems with anything mixing and changing colors. There's just no way that I could actually set everything on my face with a powder puff because I have facial hair and powder puffs are flat. They don't really have an easy time getting under hair. And my ears. How could I get all those different spots on my ear without a brush? I've got to admit, the skin is skinning. I mean, like, the pores are blurred, everything is soft and smooth looking, it's completely mattified. I don't want to speak too soon and jinx it, but so far, this is amazing. I'm not having any problems with anything coming up. The brush isn't making any brush strokes from the foundation moving on top of the primer. Everything's locked in nicely. I mean, so far, this is going so much better than I thought it would. The Powder Bronzer and Contour Palette was $6.98. It's from Iman Makeup, and it's an 8-in-1 powder product. Oh my gosh, these pans are gigantic. And it looks like all of them are warm toned. So apparently today I am not gonna have contour. I'm only gonna have bronzers. It actually says on the back that this is second to none luminous foundation. This luminous sheer powder foundation contains vitamin E and can be used wet or dry. Blot foundation with a dry sponge for sheer to medium radiance or smooth over your skin with a wet sponge for glowing medium to full coverage. That's very interesting. We're not gonna be using it like that because I have way too much coverage on this face already. So using the same brush that I used in the powder, I'm gonna take the warm nude shade and just start to bronze up the skin with that. This is a pretty orangey bronzer, so if you don't like the orangey tone in your bronzer, you probably won't like this palette, or at least the shade Warm Nude. I mean, yeah, they kind of all look a little bit orangey, maybe except Latte. Latte looks like it might kind of be a little on the cooler side. Actually, let's take a little bit of Latte and see what it looks like. Oh no, that's way more orange than I thought. That literally just looks like orange. And that's all. Great. Aww. I think we found our first non-winner. The warm nude shade is okay, mainly because it's light enough that it's not really adding a whole lot of depth to the skin, but they all have sort of that orangey tone. Ugh. Well, it's definitely not my favorite, but I guess I'm just gonna have to leave it as is. I keep blending and blending, but it's still orange. Well, there's no coming back from that. Let's add more blush to make me feel better about my life. For $6.29, we got a blush stacker. This has five shades in it. Not gonna lie, it's kind of cute. And it appears like the five shades are a pretty fair range. We've got a deeper, more corally pink, a softer baby pink, a bright orange, a darker hot pink, and a nude. Or no, wait, two nudes? No, a nude and a brush. Okay. I think our eyeshadow look today is gonna be nude. The blush I already used was like a mauve natural shade. So I think I'm gonna use the more rosy shade at the bottom. It looks sort of mauve and we do still have a blush brush left. And we do still have a blush brush left. So it's clean, no product is on it. Let's see how she builds up. A lot doesn't come off whenever you dip into it. So I think this is gonna be a shade we're gonna need to build up. Wow, is that exactly the same shade as the cream blush? Maybe not exactly, but it's really close. The shade is actually cute. It does seem like it's sitting on the skin a little funny though. I wouldn't necessarily say it looks 
patchy, but in some spots it's a little more vivid than others, but that could be just some remaining powder that I have on the skin that's not letting the blush sit on the skin. Highlighter is an eight color palette for $7.19 from Insfany. When I tell you I got so excited when I saw this one, I mean it. I mean, look at those colors. They are so pretty. Since I'm not 100% sure as to what the eyeshadow look is gonna look like, I'm just gonna use the lightest one. So like the white silvery one, but it's got like a blue purple shift to it. It's definitely a multi-chrome. Uh, so currently all I can see are some little pieces of blue glitter and that is all. Let's try a finger application with this one. Oh, 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 oh that looks so good. Oh, oh, wow, it's so magical. It's silver, it's blue, it's pink, it's purple. It's silver, it's blue, it's pink, it's purple. This is a product I would definitely not have a problem buying again for $8. That is stunning. You know, this would also make an amazing eyeshadow palette. For brows, we've got a couple of different products. For $3.47, we've got some stamping powder, I'm pretty sure. And it also comes with a little facial razor, which I love. You know, if you need a little brow touch up, you can use it. I do recommend doing that before all of your other makeup, but to each his own. And this is from the iconic brand we all know and love, IBCCC in DC. One of my faves. Okay, so in the little kit, we have our stencil pack, some spoolies, and the actual eyebrow powder. And as a just in case for $1.07, I also grabbed this eyebrow pencil from Hendayan. The brow pencil actually seems pretty standard. We've got a thick wedge on one side and a spoolie on the other. But before we use that, let's see if we can find a stencil that will fit these brows. I mean, worst case, my brows are just gonna be bigger than normal. Oh yeah, that's gonna be so big. Okay. It says to start on the tail and fill it in and work your way forward. So just gonna get the tail first. I mean, I'm not mad at that. That looks really good, actually. <laughs> oh, this one's kind of difficult being right-handed. Okay, moment of truth. <gasps> Are they even good enough for me? Whew, I was very skeptical about that, but I'm pleasantly surprised. My tails look good. You know, if that shade wasn't so dark, I would use those daily on the no makeup days. Cause then I wouldn't have to worry about putting the stencil on top of foundation and it ripping anything up. I could just do the brow and do my regular skincare for the day and be done. But now I wanna take the spoolie that came in that kit, blend some of this edge out and start to pull some of that powder forward. And since I'm adding some of that powder pigment to the spoolie, by brushing the brows out, it's gonna help pull that color forward a little bit and make it look a little more natural so I don't just have like a dark brown tail with no color in the front. This side didn't get quite as even of a layer. I'm pretty sure it's just because the powder wasn't as saturated on the end of the sponge, but I think it'll be okay. I think the spoolie is gonna be able to blend out anything that didn't really work. Yeah, there we go. Now I'm gonna go in with the brow pencil just to make sure the inner half of the brow isn't lonely because right now it's kind and lonely. Let's make a few little hair strokes. Oh wow, this pencil is so much warmer than that powder is. Uh, okay, maybe this shade is not gonna work for me. It just said this was brown online when I checked out, but I think it's more of like warm brown. And I am definitely more of a cool brown brow guy. So I'm just gonna try to work some of that darker color into the warmer color and maybe find a happy medium here. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there because if I keep adding more, this is gonna get really intense. There's still a little bit of differentiation between the warm tone and the cool tone, but it's not enough for me to have a problem with. I really like this thing. Kind of amazing. I've never used a brow stencil before, so this is a brand new experience for me. It's finally time to move on to eyes. By the way, I got a 50 pack of eyeshadow shields for $2.24 that I was going to use with the intention that I did my eyeshadow before my face makeup, but I figured we're using a nude palette, so I'm not really too worried about fallout because I can probably just blend most of it away. So just know that these were originally intended to be used, but I'm not gonna use them today because I don't wanna mess up my under eyes. For $2.24, again, we are using the Averil eyeshadow primer today. And this one looks a lot like the P. Louise base. Then for eyeshadow for $7.19, we're gonna use the Frumst Naked Smoky Eyeshadow Palette. This one is obviously made to look like the Urban Decay Naked Eyeshadow Palette. Only difference is it's huge. This is so much bigger than what the 
naked palettes are, but it's actually got a pretty decent color story. This half is pretty much shimmers, then it goes to matte shades, except that purple. That's also a shimmer. I don't know why they just didn't switch the black and the purple. Either way, half shimmer, half matte. Definitely the shades to make a smoky look. And as a backup, just in case, for $3.59, I also picked up this 25 color palette. This one also has a ton of nude shades. Honestly, like too many nude shades, but they're all very natural, very wearable, very earthy. In fact, the palette is called Earthy. And the very last eye product I got was also from Everil. This is a chameleon eyeshadow. This is another one that once I saw the picture of it, I was like, I gotta have it. I gotta have it. I have to get it. And for $3.59, I am not complaining yet. That is gorgeous. Wow, this base is thick. Oh my gosh, you could probably use this as a concealer. This feels thicker than face creams in contour palettes. I mean, it's probably the thickest eyeshadow base I've ever felt. And again, I don't want to jinx it, but an eyeshadow base this thick is probably going to add a lot of texture to your eyelid. Or at least a lot of texture to my eyelid, because I sure do have some texture. Now, when it comes to the eyeshadow, I'm going to do just a basic crease, something nude, neutral, and wearable, so that I can go in with this. I want this to be the star of the show. That being said, I'm realizing now that literally none of these brushes are blending brushes. We have a ton of shader brushes and a ton of flat brushes, but no round brushes at all. Unless that's what they intended these for, and if that's the case, that's kind of sad. Again though, for $5 for a 25 piece brush set, it's okay. Luckily, we don't need a blending brush from the $5 brush set because our fancy Fromst palette comes with an exclusive double ended blender brush. One's a fluffy blending brush, the other's a flat brush, kind of like what I have a million of now. So let's go ahead and grab some eyeshadow. I'm going to use this light tan shade, and I'm pretty much just going to set the base with this shade. Then I'm going to move down the line into the darker brown shade and just use that to deepen up the crease. Since I put that light shadow down first, this should blend with it and make it like a lighter version of itself. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. With the crease defined, I'm now going to blend out that darker shade toward the brow bone a little bit. I think maybe I want to give this eyeshadow palette a shot just to say I did. I will hand it to the Frumst palette. The shades built up nicely and they blended it nicely. So I'm having no problems out of it. Let's see if this one is is just as good. Let's use this shade right on the end. It looks like it's a little bit cooler, so it should help blend between the dark shade and the brow bone. Let's see. As long as it's not too warm, it should be okay. I mean, the brown that's there already is very, very cool. To me, that doesn't even look like a brown. It looks like a gray, but the gray is beside that, and I swear I didn't use it. Well, it looks like the shade I'm using now is close enough to my skin tone that you can't really tell I'm adding it, which is actually perfect for what I'm using it for. The matte eyeshadow is done. Now I know there is no way that this chameleon eyeshadow pigment is gonna go with anything I've got going on, but you know what? I don't care. It's just way too pretty and I have been so excited to use it, so we're just gonna go in with it right on the lid. that's so pretty. Wow, and it's actually letting me blend it with a brush. Okay, that is amazing. I love that so much. I've only got one slight little problem with it. It just doesn't melt into the matte eyeshadow. So I'm going back into the Naked palette. I'm gonna grab just a little bit of the brown and the tiniest bit of the black. Tap off the excess and just blend that outer V. Yes. Ooh. Now, these next products, Oh, these next products. As long as they're not duds, I could see myself rebuying these over and over again. First, for $7.19, we have a 12-piece color liquid eyeliner set. And for $12.67, a 20-piece waterproof cream gel liner set. Now, I don't know if these are specifically duping another brand and their products or not, but to me, it looks like the ColourPop cream gel liners and liquid liners that come in little kits like this. Again, I don't know if that's actually what they're supposed to be, but if you recognize the packaging, let me know in the comments what brand they're trying to duplicate. I'm just excited because there's so many colors inside. It's literally the entire rainbow plus some. And it's almost the same for the liquid liners too. They almost make the full rainbow. I feel like I'm missing a couple of shades to make the exact real rainbow, but there's like versions of primary colors that are kind of off a little bit, like the green. That 
looks like a teal instead, or like the orange is like a corally pink. Okay, it took entirely way too long, but I finally just got done taking off all the plastic from each one of these. It was like opening 45 CVS packages. I am exhausted now. You guys definitely see green when I look to the side. I see mainly purple. Uh, let's go green. That way it will at least match for you guys, and then the shift will just be an extra special little zhuzh. Ooh, these have a really sharp point starting out too. If I was using that as a graphic liner, that would be amazing. That is so pigmented. You know, I don't really know if they are duping the ColourPop cream gel liners, but that's just as pigmented as the ColourPop liners. So I swatched a few of the liquid liners and these get so thin, like the point on them is super, super thin and sharp anyway. So I think you could do an easy graphic liner with these. I'm not going to for today's look, but I'm gonna try to make a teeny tiny wing with this purple shade. Let's go ahead and finish up these eyes. For mascara, I've got the Queen Mascara, 4D Curling Cool Black Mascara, and this was $3.59. On the app, it's called the Scepter Mascara. And now I see exactly why. It's bedazzled. I mean, it's literally a scepter. Now I think this packaging is meant to be like the Christian Louboutin lipsticks. I'm pretty sure that's the brand, the Christian Louboutin. It definitely doesn't feel like how it looks. It looks like it's gonna be really heavy and bougie, but it's super, super light. It's still super cute though. Then for lashes, I spent $10.34 on 50 pair of lashes. This is the biggest lash pack I've ever seen in my life. There are so many lashes in here, but they're all super fluffy and like faux mink. So I think they're gonna look great. Let's see what kind of wand we're working with for $4. Okay, so a pretty standard thin wand. This is gonna be great for lengthening, which I think that's what the pack said. Oh, it just said 4D curling. I've got lash glue on a pair of lashes, so I need to move quickly. How did I already get mascara up there? It's got a thicker consistency, but it's very black. I like that about it. Okay, moment of truth for the lashes. I did not cut these down at all. They are a little bit long, but they fit my eye shape, it seemed like. So I wanted to leave that band so I could have full fluffy lashes all the way across. Wow, those are huge. And I don't mind at all. Those are fantastic. Now that the eyes are finished, we are down to our very last three products. For lips, we got a 12-piece lip liner set for $4.94. And the range is okay. It's nothing like crazy amazing. The variety is not, you know, from one end of the spectrum to the other. But we do have some more mauve tones, some more pinky tones, some more reddy tones, and some more nudie tones. So it's, a, it's an okay mix of regular lip shades. I'm gonna use the shade 04. This one looks like it's as close to my lip tone as possible. Really, I just wanted something nude because we're gonna go in with a gloss next. And I'm pretty sure all of the glosses are sheer. So I just want my lip to look natural. Uh, that's not a nude. That's kind of a corally red. Slight change of plans using the shade 01 instead. That's better. So I know the ingredients are probably in completely different spectrums, but these feel a lot like the Wayne Goss lip pencils. They're just smooth and creamy and wood. Now let's make this pout juicy with some gloss. This is the Romantic Bear six color lip tint and it was $4.47. I can smell these through the packaging or the packages smell like cinnamon. I think that's cinnamon. We've got quite a few shades here too. A melon pink, a hot pink, and a baby pink for the pink spectrum. A blue based red and an orange based red. And just a really bright orange. I'm thinking the kind of baby pink shade. This is called Lovely Peach. What? Oh my gosh, that is not sheer at all. Holy cow, that is crazy pigmented. Ew, what is this? This is not a gloss. It's really, really thick. 
There's no way I could even put this on like a regular lip product. Is this one of those peely things? Oh my gosh. So apparently these are discontinued now. I clicked on it to try and find some information on it and there wasn't any. And whenever I look at the recommended products from this link, it gives me all of the peely lipstick products. So I think that's what this is. I think this is like a peely thing. That makes sense. I was very worried. This feels so weird. I had never used anything like this. Oh, I really don't like the way that feels. Well, I am not ashamed to say that the first time using a product like this, I'm really, really bad at it. I mean, I couldn't even make a clean line around my lips. So I guess I've just got to wait till this dries now. It is super glossy right now. And that orange actually looks really good with that green. I gotta quit talking. Bear me. Okay, I think we're dry. Maybe. All I can taste is peaches and I love it. I really wish I would have known what these were before I went to use them because I wouldn't have used nearly as much product as I did. But you know, I thought it was a gloss. I was ready to gloss up these lips. I'm gonna have to look up some legitimate instructions for these to see if I even did that right. I do notice the tint I've got on my lips. It's just not super, super dramatic. And I'm wondering if I would have left that on longer aside from just when it dried, if it would have tinted more. Either way though, we've got a soft pink tone to the lips and it looks really natural because because it's just tinted. But I'm gonna throw on some gloss real quick anyway. I just, I, I need some, you know? See, now these lips are much happier than the other lips. I swear, gloss fixes everything in my life. Now we have one very final product to finish off this entire face of Timu products. And that is setting spray. This is the Not Maybelline Fit Me Matte Finish Setting Spray. And it was only $3.14. And that is it, guys. What do you think of this full face of Timu products? Personally, I'm really surprised that we got as many hits as we did and that I actually got an entire full face of makeup and everything worked well together and still looks good, especially the skin. Okay, the skin is skinning. And something to note, typically I start with my eye makeup so that I don't get a bunch of creasing on my forehead because I have hooded lids. So I have to do this all the time when I'm doing my eyeshadow or I can't get in my crease. That being said, my forehead looks amazing for me to have started with my face makeup and finished with the eyes. I normally have pretty bad creasing and breakage up in that section where those lines are, but right now it looks like I just finished my makeup. It looks so good. And I just really wasn't expecting to be able to get that kind of finish and that kind of quality out of $150 worth of makeup. I've even got a few definite favorites. This highlighter palette, I think it's made of my dreams. I mean, it's colorful. It's sparkly, it's shiny, it's everything I want in a highlighter palette, and I love it. This powder literally blew my mind. I did not expect it to make my skin look as good as it does, and I think that's why my forehead is doing as well as it is, because I baked with that powder. It's just so finely milled that it screams luxury, but it's only $7. Also, the cream gel liners, the amount of colors that we get for the price is insane. And I use color liners all the time, so this is a sound investment for me. Another insane winner for me is the chromatic eyeshadow. This stuff looks so good, and the formula is not creasing, it's laying flat on the eye, and that means it's doing better than a lot of the luxury liquid eyeshadows that I own. This just lets me know that there is no reason why whenever I buy a prestige or a luxury liquid eyeshadow that it should be creasing on my eye, because this doesn't. Oh, also, the foundation. I did not expect this to be as full coverage as it was, then once I discovered how full coverage it was, I did not expect expect it to then look good on the skin because it was so full, but it looks amazing. I'm telling you, the skin is the best it's been in a while. I think that's all my like absolute faves. Now for the products that just didn't really hit that mark for me, even at their affordable price tag. If I would have known that this brush set was the same brush set that Beaky Blender sent me all those years ago, I would not have ordered it. I guess if I just would have zoomed in on the picture, I would have known that it was, but I just saw 
saw 25 piece brush set for $5 and I jumped on it as soon as I saw it. I'd say if you needed just some brushes to get you through until your other brushes come in, go for it. Cause they'll get the job done. You just won't have a blending brush for your eyeshadow. Strange. But they get the job done. They're just not anything special. And if you buy those, be sure you buy some super glue too because you're gonna need to glue the ferrules back onto the brushes. Also with the brow products, this isn't really saying anything about the quality of the products themselves. This is more so about the shades that were available. Now that I've seen what brown looks like in the pencil and what dark brown looks like in the powder, I definitely would have gotten a lighter shade of the powder and a darker shade of the pencil. Again, that has nothing to do with the formula or anything like that. That's just the shade availability. Now that you know mine, let me know your favorite products that we used today and your least favorite products. Did you kind of have the same general ideas that I did for what wasn't so great? Let me know down in the comments. Let's chill. Let's talk about it. You guys know that I'm always hanging out down there with you, so let's talk. And hey, if you enjoyed this video and you want to let me know that you did, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Oh, and this is super important. 76.5% of you are not subscribed to my channel, but you watch my videos. You guys, I'm going to be here for the long haul. I'm always going to show up in that feed anyway. You might as well hit subscribe. And while you're at it, hit the little notification bell right beside subscribe so that you'll be alerted every time I upload a new video. Also, if you like this look and you want to see more looks like them, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and TikTok. My username is the same for everything. It's just Christopher JMUA. I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!